kind of how do you find the, the first couple of games? Yeah, it's been good. Settled in nicely. Um, obviously, the first two results probably didn't go our way, but when you look back at it, we definitely played very well. Um, second half against Waterford, particularly first half against Pats, and then Sligo was kind of the first game we probably lasted the 90 minutes playing well. Uh, so it's just about yeah, moving forward now to Derry. Hopefully, we can have a good 90 minutes. Was a lot of pressure on you going into the game on Monday night and how much of a relief was it your first one? I suppose it probably was pressure outside the camp, within the camp. We kind of, we all knew how good we are, I suppose. We see each other every day in training, how we're, how we're playing. The talent is there, the commitment is there, our work is there. Um, that probably just didn't come off as good as it should have been in the first two games. So it was good, yeah, absolutely. It was relief, I suppose, to put it right then against Sligo. It's always good to get the first win of the campaign under your, under your belt so now we can kind of put that behind us and just take that into Friday. You haven't created any chances Derry, the forward, forwards haven't scored yet in the three matches but you have been creating chances obviously you haven't put that right on Friday as well. Yeah um, absolutely like particularly again the Waterford and Pats game came out with no gold obviously isn't great <coughs> um, from my own perspective I probably need to add a few goals to my game um, but in saying that, I created a few chances in the first half against Pats, and we had one or two chances against Waterford as well. So uh, that will take. Um, the front three hadn't really played with each other, especially the the last two games. We've me and myself and Nash are new guys in, um, but that 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 will come very soon. We're we're working on combinations and training. We know it'll come. So uh, hopefully, one of the three of us will bang a goal or two in on Friday. Yeah. What's the biggest difference there between Premier Division and First Division? I suppose there's a few, dif- a few differences. Obviously, the first just being the general standard in play. Um, it's a lot. It's a higher temper, higher, higher tempo. Um, the first division, if you give the ball away, if you're playing with a better team, let's say you more than likely win it back straight away and you're on top again. Whereas he's here, no matter who you play against, um, you kind of you have to just work that bit harder to win the ball back. And then when you do have the ball, it's harder to probably take players on. Uh, they're wiser, they're older, they're more experienced. Um, and then the footballing aspect aside, I suppose, just the atmosphere at the games. Like I'm coming from playing maybe two or three hundred people every week. Like we nearly have that in away fans alone when we went to Pat. So just the whole spectacle of the game, walking out and there's flares, everything. It's just it's a different, different world coming up. But uh, the best way to hand tackle it is just to relish it and embrace it all, I suppose. And how have you found the increase in attention? Like, you know, Pat, Pat Dolan's new paper column was <laughs> talking up and the City fans seem excited by, by what you can do. Yeah, I, I suppose I came in a very much unknown, even in the first division. I was probably known within that, within that small circle. I was very unknown to the Premier Division world as such. Um, so, yeah, it kind of took me, by, <laughs> took me by surprise. Like, you have a good game in the first division and passed off, you don't hear anything then until the next game, whereas if you have a, a decent game here now, your, your, Twitter, your Twitter mentions are going up and all this different malarkey, but you just have to brush it off or take it with a pinch of salt, I suppose, because like, there's no point being good for one game hearing this, that and the other, and then you're bad then the next day, and everyone's looking at you. And, and it does it kind of put a little bit of a target in your head then, like in, in terms of defenders wanting to kind of start there from the off? I, I suppose, yeah, um, you, you don't want to be doubled up in games, but if, if I'm doubled up, then the left winger, the number 10, the striker are free, so it's nearly a personal sacrifice if, if you're doing well one game and then you're targeted the next game and give somebody else a chance to, to get more ball. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the way it goes, I suppose. What kind of game do you expect against Derry? Uh, Derry, they've, they've started well, obviously, as well. They have, yeah. They're kind of a bit of an unknown. I wouldn't know many of the players, maybe aside from... Greg Slogger, I played with him at UCD, he's a strong, sturdy midfielder. Um, but we'll, at least we'll really analyse them, I suppose. We'll get our information on them and we'll know what to expect. But at the moment, it's, it's going to be a frantic game. The first couple of rounds of games, I've been told, are always frantic, hell, hell for leather. Um, so hopefully we might settle down and we play a bit more football than, than the last couple of games. We get on the deck and we'll start driving at them.